you have your Bibles, go with me to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 is where we're going to be today. Most of you know by now we're in a study and we're calling it Under Construction. Obviously a tie into what we're going through as a church and good things are happening in that project. But God is doing a work of building in our lives and we're thankful that he's more interested in what's happening on the inside than just all that's happening around us. And we took the time in the study to look at some signs you'd find on construction sites making a spiritual application. Week one, we considered uh, the fact that we're to be open during construction. The purpose of our church continues. Last week, we took a look at the sign danger. We talked about there are uh, exciting times associated with construction, but they can be dangerous times. And today, uh, we're going to take a look at this sign up here, hard hats required. And we know on a job site, hard hats are for the purpose of protecting the head. But today, more than just the head, I want to talk about guarding our mind, our thoughts. It's, it's so important. Uh, we know that uh, our minds are really the battlefield where life is fought. The most intense battles you'll face in your life will be fought in your mind. And I want you to know this today. If you're listening, say amen. amen. This is true for you. It's true for me. Know this today. You, you have the life you have because of the thoughts you think. The life you have today is the result of the thoughts that you think. You cannot live a positive life with negative thoughts. That's why Solomon in Proverbs 23 said, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You have the life you have because of the thoughts that you have. And that's why our thoughts tend to be such a struggle. You need to know this today. The devil has a plan for our thought life. We know he's a liar. Uh, Jesus made that abundantly clear in John 8, 44. He said of, de of the devil, he said he's a liar and the father of it. But I'm glad to tell you today, not only does the devil have a plan for your mind, Jesus does too. And he wants you to think thoughts that are pleasing to him. I think of how Paul wrote of it in 2 Corinthians 10 when he said through Christ, we can bring into captivity every thought to the obedient, obedience of Christ. God says you don't have to live captive to the wrong thoughts. You don't have to live captive to negativity, to all the anxiety and stress that we all are plagued with from time to time. God says, I'll tell you what, if there's a stronghold in your life, I can pull it down. I can remove it. That word stronghold used in the Bible refers to a military fort that is supposed to be impenetrable. And maybe you've got a pattern of thoughts something that you tend to go to in your mind. God says, I can remove even that, that stronghold. We're going to look today for the example found in the life of Jesus Christ, as Paul wrote about him, in Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to read a few verses today. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Again, all the notes are in the uh, church app. If you haven't downloaded that, I think some other outlines are passed out. And I'll say this. I may not get into every reference scripture the way I normally would, but they're there in your notes, and you can take a look at those. But let's look today in Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5. The Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. This is a rich text. Of course, it goes on, but for the sake of our study today, we'll stop in verse 9. And I want you to go back with me to verse 5, and we'll find these two words, this mind, this mind. I want us to think on that together. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the great God that you are. We thank you today, even Lord, for this breeze, and I pray that you'll help us to focus in on this time of study, how important it is. I pray that someone would be liberated today from a, a mind that plagues them. And Lord, all of us face this battle, so may we be encouraged through the word. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. The conversation I was in was profoundly negative. A lot of would-haves and should-haves and could-haves, and, and the, the negativity of that conversation was directed right at me. How many of you have ever been run into the ground by someone else? They just dumped all their negativity right on you, and, and it just continued to come. The, the voice I was listening to said, basically, Steve, you, you know, you just can't seem to do anything right, and all these mistakes, and, and uh, basically, you're a failure, and that your hopes for the future are probably pretty dim, and, and nobody likes conversations like this, but the worst thing about this conversation is I was speaking to myself. I was entertaining these thoughts. I was thinking these thoughts. 
I think many of you know what it is to get down on yourself and get plagued by this type of thinking. And, and the fact is, all of us have a running dialogue in our minds. It starts the moment we awake and it lasts all the day long. And when you stop to consider that our lives, again, if you're listening, say amen. amen. Our lives take the direction of our strongest thoughts. And if our strongest thoughts are negative, if they're not true, they're, they're going to lead us in a direction in life that is not the direction that God has for us. Now, of course, I don't know how much potential there is in my life. I don't know what my possibilities may be. But I do know that I can never do what God would have or become whom God would have if I allow my thoughts to lead the way, thoughts that aren't surrendered to God. I've learned that if I don't make up my mind, my unmade mind will unmake me. And that's true for you. Now, this is where someone could say, well, pastor, we can't choose what we think. And I hope to show you today by the word of God that that's not true. We're all responsible for the thoughts that reside in our minds. There may be fleeting thoughts, that's one thing. But, but what it is we ruminate on, what we dwell on, we have a choice as to those thoughts. So the question today could be, well, how do we have a thought life that's honoring to God? How do we see these strongholds brought down? Well, here's the first thought this morning. Number one, to find it, you have to lose it. To find it, you have to lose it. I, I think we're all familiar with the expression, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. I heard of the guy who went to the doctor. He said, doc, I, I can't remember my name. I can't remember where I work. I can't remember what kind of car I drive. I don't even remember how I got here. And the, the doctor said, all right, look, let's just slow down for a minute. How long have you been struggling with this? The guy said, struggling with what? I don't know if you've ever been there where it's like, man, I can't hold on to anything right now. I'm struggling in my mind. Well, friends, listen, here's the good news. To find the mind that God has for you, we have to first be willing to lose our own mind. We have to set our thoughts aside. Now let's go back to verse 5 here in the text. The Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Friends, so often in the Christian life, we learn of things that God wants to add to our lives. And before that can happen, we have to remove something to make space for what it is that God wants to do. I'll, I'll give you an example of this. In Ephesians 4, Paul develops a passage, and I won't share all of it with you today, but, but he was encouraging believers. He said, put off the former life. Put it off. And then he adds in the conclusion of that text by saying, and put on the new man. So often we dwell alone in our thoughts, and that doesn't bring victory. Also, we have a tendency in crucial moments to go to God and ask God, God, I'm, I'm experiencing this. Would you help me with this? And I'll tell you a better prayer is, God, I'm stuck in a thought pattern that is not honoring to you. Don't help me with my own thoughts. Help me to reject those. Help me to lose those so I can find this mind that you would have for me. God's word informs us. That when we trust in ourselves, including our thoughts, we're foolish. Solomon had this to say, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. And friends, deliverance from our wrongful thoughts is found in God. We have to yield our heart and our minds to him. I love the words of James, the younger brother of our Lord and Savior, who said, if any of you lack wisdom, that's all of us, he said, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. Victory in our minds begin when we say, God, my thoughts aren't right today. My thoughts are wrong. God, they're not based in faith. They're not rooted in truth. They are not thinking of the good work that you've done in my life. So God, please give me the wisdom I need to find Christ's mind for your life. You have to lose the mind that's been leading you in the wrong direction. That's why the Bible teaches us that we're to yield to him. Here's the second thought. To find it, you have to lose it. But number two is this, to live it, you have to choose it. We read in this passage, let this mind be in you. Let, in other words, this is a work God wants to do in our lives, but we have to be willing. We have to be willing to, to choose it. We have to empty ourselves to know the joy of being filled by him. And this means that we have to grow from listening to ourselves to speaking to ourselves the truth of God. Let me give you an example. Uh, Sundays. Uh, I, I'm nervous every Sunday before I stand to preach. Every Sunday. I feel it in my chest, literally. I feel my heart. I feel my heart every week. I'm nervous. And, and there's a conversation that tends to come to my mind every Sunday. And it, it's kind of a conversation that goes something like this. All right, it's Sunday again. You think after 
more than 24 years in my 25th year of preaching, I'd be a little better at it by now. Every week, somebody gets upset with something I said. I wonder who I'll disappoint this week. I wonder who I'll offend this week. It's probably not going to go very well. Just about every week, those thoughts come into my mind. And if you've ever stood in front of people, you know what it is to have those thoughts that come. Now, what I have to do is stop listening to myself and start speaking to myself. Here's where the victory comes. Those thoughts come in. And I have to say, Steve, would you, would you stop listening to yourself? Let me speak some truth into your life. Steve, you're a child of the living God. You've been called by God Almighty to stand and boldly declare the truth. The power is not in you. It is of God. The word of God will not return void. When I open the word of God, I know there is power in the gospel message and that people can be saved when they hear it preached. I know that believers can be built up. I understand it's really not about me at all. And when I get my focus right, my thinking turns around and I begin to praise God in advance for the good that will come out of our time in the word. I think of Gideon, a man used incredibly of God. God began to share with him what it was he was going to do. And here's what Gideon said. God, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. He's thinking with his old mind. He wasn't thinking in faith. He, he was thinking with that, that, that fleshly mind. Now, factually, he was not wrong. But from a spiritual standpoint, he was debilitated because his thinking was not right. We today need to be more like those of whom Joel writes when he said, let the weak say, I am strong. Now, I'm not talking today about fake it till you make it. I'm, I'm not talking today about mind tricks. I, I'm not talking about that type of a life or the power of positive thinking. I'm talking about choosing by faith to see yourself as God sees you. I'm talking about looking to the Lord and taking your lead from Him. I'm talking about realizing that our weaknesses are turned into strengths when we choose God's perspective in our life. I love how the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 said, when I am I'm weak then am I strong he said I'm going to see this thing as God sees it when I'm weak that's when I'm strong our thoughts are our choice we hope to live with the mind of God we need to determine to focus on his word and his truth I think of Paul in Philippians 4 he said finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Paul said, think on these things. We have a choice in the matter. Think on these things. We've got to lose our mind to find the, the mind of Christ. And, and then we've got to choose the thoughts that God would have us to think. And then finally today, and how many of you are thankful for that little word right there, finally, huh? And uh, we're going to get into the final thought. Number three, to keep it. You have to refuse it. To keep it, you have to refuse it. Now, I think a lot of what I've said today is relatively known. I don't know that any of it was an epiphany for most folks here today. We understand if we want Christ's mind, we've got to lose our own. We get that. We understand the importance of choosing the thoughts that we'll have. But, but the issue for most of us comes with keeping our thought life where it needs to be. Our victories are sporadic. They're few and far between. We'll get victory in one moment, in the next moment. I mean, in an instant, we can go from where we need to be to a life that is totally overwhelmed with the thoughts that God would not have us to think. Yet God's desire is that we would have minds that know victory. Paul in Philippians 4 said, the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I'm telling you today, there's a promise for you in God's word. These thoughts, these fears, these anxieties, these stresses that plague us. The Bible tells us that God wants to have victory in the battlefield of the mind and that through faith in Jesus, he can keep our hearts and minds by his power. That keeping proves to be the struggle. And Jesus models for us in this passage how we can win that fight. We must refuse that old pattern from coming back and dominating. Now let's listen what Paul wrote here about Jesus Christ. He said of him, he said, but made himself of no rep reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. 
And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Here's, here's what the Bible's teaching us about Jesus. God the Son, all God and all man, all at the same time. He made this decision. I'm, I'm going to uh, de-emphasize this reputation. I, I'm going to be a servant in my life. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be someone who humbles myself and be obedient to the will of the Father submissive, yielding, and perhaps no word gets to the point any better than the word found in verse 8 where the Bible says of Jesus that he humbled himself. Years ago, I worked for a rather large church in Tennessee, and they hosted a conference, and and uh, literally thousands of people would come, pastors from all across America, names that I had heard of and I was excited to meet. And, and uh, one of my responsibilities that week in the conference was to take a stack of books and go to every guest speaker and have them sign all these books. And they were going to be used as, as gifts and so forth. And, and uh, I thought, man, they got the right man for the job. I was feeling large and in charge. I was rubbing shoulders with these guys I'd only heard about. Or maybe I'd seen a book that they'd written uh, or maybe even read a book that they'd written. And uh, I, I remember one night I went around to all these speakers and and uh, had the best time I was just I was full of myself just glad to be in a room that I really felt I didn't belong in but here I was and I'm getting to know these guys and I remember I got to the very last speaker and he said hey Steve I said yes sir he said your zipper's down <laughs> that's a bummer it was worse than that when I looked down to check not only was my zipper down but I had my shirt tucked in and somehow my shirt tail worked its way out through my fly and I thought I've made myself a fool all night long nobody wanted to mention it probably for fear of making me feel bad but thankfully the the last guy who had no problem making me feel bad he was family uh, said Steve your zipper's down you look like an idiot and he was exactly right now there's a word for what happened in that moment the word was humiliation humiliation that's what happened to me in that moment. Friends, humiliation is what happens to you. Humility is what happens in you. Humiliation is the result of an action. Humility is the result of a decision. Humiliation shows up when you don't ask for it or look for it. Humility is only found when you seek it. And we must do the same. This is how we refuse our old thought patterns. I love the story of the word humility. Every word came from somewhere. And the word humility means by definition literally to run low. And it was used originally as a word to refer to rivers that were running low. They would say, for example, the Nile River's hu hu uh, hum uh, humble. It has humility, meaning it's low, it's running low. And friends, listen. That's the kind of life we need to have. I'm talking about when we make a choice to run low, it means we have an esteem for self that is appropriate, an esteem for God that is enormous. It means that each day we voluntarily humble ourselves so that we can exalt Christ and that all begins in the mind. Verse seven of our text, Jesus, uh, of Jesus, we read this, took upon him the form of a servant. And friends, when we see our minds as servants of God, we understand that we cannot do what it is he would have if we are stuck in the negative and self-defeating thoughts of the past. We have to refuse those thoughts, tell them to go back to hell from whence they came so we can keep going for the Lord. And this is the struggle, isn't it? For some of you more than others. Some of us are more thoughtful than others. But this is the struggle for all of us. And for some, it's like the quintessential struggle in life. Maybe today you got off to a great start and you've already been living what it is I'm teaching today and you started by saying, Lord, I want to lose my mind so that I can find yours. Lord, I want your thoughts. And God, I'm choosing your mind so that I can live for you. Again, off to a great start. You've given up in that prayer, the stress and the anxiety and the discouragement and the regret and the guilt, none of which is coming from God. It's just something that's generated on the inside. And you're, you're saying, God, I, I want to lose my mind and gain your mind. I choose your thoughts, not my thoughts. And let's say you pray that prayer and you go to work. You're dealing with that guy that's aggravated you before and he's aggravating you again and you've got a decision to make that moment. You feel something welling up on the inside and it's not good and the old thoughts are, are beginning to come back and at that moment you need to pray, Lord, help me to refuse these wrong thoughts so that I can keep yours. And that is a prayer saying, God, help me to humble myself. Again, as Paul in 2 Corinthians wrote, God wants to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. To have victory in your thoughts, you have to lose and then you have to choose, and then you must refuse. 
And by God's grace and through prayer, you have to choose to run low, to humble yourself. Now, some people think of this idea of, of humble, uh, a humble life, of, of, of humbling ourselves. And we think, well, that would mean I'm diminished somehow. If I live a life like that, it means that it's not going to be all that I would have it to be, that I'll be lessened in some way. And friends, I'm telling you today, nothing could be further from the truth. You're going to get far more out of life when you're with, living with a mind of Christ and when you're living with a mind that's plagued with all of these thoughts that are not honoring to him. And I, I know that's true because of what we read in verse 9. After all we read of Jesus in verse 9, we read this, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Friends, hear me now. This is the beauty of the Christian life. You rise when you descend in humility. God exalts you as you come to him with a humble spirit. That's how God has designed this life. I think of Jesus' words in Matthew 23. We read, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall, more emphatic than will, he said those that humble themselves, they shall be exalted. Peter added to that in 1 Peter 5 by saying, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. So much of the pressure in our thought life is self-exaltation. It's, it's trying to get where it is we want to go without thought of what it is that God would have us to do. And when we humble ourselves, what we're doing is placing our, our lives, our minds, our thoughts in the hands of God so that he can guide and direct and lead us to where it is he would have us to go. You guys are getting about half of what I prepared today, but half is about all we need today. I get that. The Bible's filled with so much about the mind. And again, it's because that's where the battles are fought that's where the battles are fought. When someone says, that's it, I quit, they quit up here a long time before that announcement was made. The mind is so important. And one of the most well-known passages on the Bible is found in Romans 12, where the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And friends, I want us today to make the connection between a mind that is being transformed by God and a mind that is being renewed by God. And it all begins with a statement in the beginning of that passage where the Bible tells us that we're to be living sacrifices. Now, the primary Jewish audience to whom Paul was writing, they would have immediately had a picture in their mind's eye of a sacrifice. Sacrifices aren't living. Sacrifices went to the altar, they were sacrificed, and they became dead. Dead sacrifices didn't get up and run around. Dead, dead sacrifices didn't com complain about how things were going. They, they had died, and, and yet the Bible says that as believers, we are not dead sacrifices, we're living sacrifices, which means maybe you've had a time in your life where you've put your life on the proverbial altar and say, God, I belong to you. All that I have, all that I do, I want it to be honoring to you. But maybe from that altar, because you were not a dead sacrifice, but a living sacrifice, you got up again. That means victory in the Christian life is that daily, even moment by moment decision. Say, God, help me in this moment. Help me in my thought life. Help me, dear God. We're living sacrifices. This is why our thoughts tend to run hot and cold. It's because sometimes we are committed to the Lord and other times we want to take the reins back into our hands. And I'm encouraging you today, if you want to live in victory, learn to daily, completely, in thought and deed, yield your life to Jesus Christ. And imagine if we did this. Imagine how that would impact our relationships, our marriages, our parenting, our, our workplace uh, interactions, uh, all of it. Imagine if we chose to lose our mind so that we could make room for the mind of Christ. Imagine if we chose his mind so we could live for him and we refused our old mind when it tried to come back. I would imagine we would know the joy that God intends for our lives. And I'd imagine our humility would lead to a life that would help us to become a vessel that God could lift up and exalt, not to make a name for ourselves, but to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Our thoughts are the result of our decisions. The life you have is connected to the thoughts you think. You cannot live a positive life with negative thoughts. God knows that. He knows how we're put together. He made us, and that's why in his love and his word, 
He said, your mind is just not going to get it done. So he said, let this mind be in you. And friends, that's a decision we have to make today. Our Father, we're grateful for the privilege of opening your word and having this time in study. Lord, how thankful I am for these people. I just love our church family. Help us to take this message into our hearts and minds. Lord, I know that all of us are prone to thoughts of fear and stress and anxiety and bitterness and regret and, and guilt. And, and all of these things, Lord, we focus on to the neglect of the thoughts that you have for us. Help us to live the Christ life and enjoy the Christ mind. Help us, we ask. Thank you for watching today's service. It's our prayer, whether you're a friend near or far, that today's services were a help and encouragement to you. If you'd like to get more connected with us, stop by our website, or maybe you have a prayer request or a question that we can help you with, feel free to drop us an email. Again, these services are designed to help you encourage and grow in your faith in Jesus Christ. If we can ever do anything for you, please let us know. And it's our prayer that we'll get to worship with you again soon.